um, presentations. I want to pick up on what Marta said about the civil society and the grassroots. You've all painted a fairly dismal picture of the future. But can you say something about the success or any progress from the grassroots and what can civil society do and can we do to support them? Thanks a lot. Next one. Uh, you have a mic? Okay, you can do it, but uh, please. Yeah. Sorry, is this on? Um, hi, my name is Shantana Shahid. I'm with the Swedish Burma Committee. I have a comment and a question, really briefly. Um, on Aung San Suu Kyi, I think that instead of placing all these expectations on one person, you should hold the government of Myanmar to account for failing to protect their citizens. They are responsible, and instead of just entirely swallowing their, their rhetoric on that this is such an unfortunate uh, development, we've been dealt a bad hand, this is communal violence, and there is so much evidence that discrimination against the Rohingya and other Muslim populations is systematic and is state sanctioned. So hold them to account for that, instead of constantly expecting this from a um, formal Nobel Peace Prize winner. Um, my question is also on the EU, um, elaborating on what Zarni brought up. Um, all of you, or everyone in the panel, you seem to share a rather skeptical understanding of the developments in Burma, or a nuanced understanding, I would say. Joachim Kreutz, you called it the so-called democratization. Zarni, you emphasized that the reform process is actually a process to maintain military power, but in just a different shape. Um, but the EU's analysis is completely different. If you go into their website, I just went in right Any now. Question? Yes, the, f the first sentence is, the first sentence is, um, the government of uh, Myanmar are committed to a genuine democratization. And this analysis is going to inform the EU's policies, and they've just recently announced billions and billions of EU, um, of EU money in support of the government's reform process. So I'd like to ask the Swedish Institute of International Affairs, since you work with um, informing international debate on international affairs, why is the EU's uh, analysis so entirely off? That's for you, you are uh, I, <laughs> over there, please. Yes, uh, my name is Samia Munk uh, from Burma as well. Uh, just a very straightforward question. Do you think uh, there will be election in 2000, like this year? And the reason is that in relation to that, the, the, the government has said that without having the ceasefire dialogue, ceasefire, uh, uh, a ceasefire agreement, there won't probably be an election. So there's a worry about that. And I, w I think you can have rightly point out the, the fact that um, the, if, if when we listen to the the, the minister of the president office, he's very positive and things like oh yeah, I think we will we'll get the agreement in two weeks or three months. Um, but but in 2013 October, that was just before the meeting in Liza, and then the army said that. The army is involved in the process, and and even in the parliament, I think the Home Minister, I think General Jowin, he was saying that the negotiation with the ceasefire is currently with the uh, the constitution. So, and if if there won't be a ceasefire agreement in February this uh, February the 12th, do you think it's a, there will be a problem for the election? Thanks. And then there was this gentleman there as well. My name is Ruang Lian. I come from Burma and I'm studying theology and human rights at Stockholm School of Theology. I have one comment, one clarification and one question. Um, concerning with Dr. Zani, um, I'm agree with, uh, uh, I mean, in line with Dr. Zani, um, I'm skeptic of the democratization of Burma. And one clarification is, if I'm not mistaken, um, Mr. Joachim said that only the Kachin and the Xi'an signed Panglong Agreement. But as far as I know, uh, the Qin also signed the Panglong Agreement under the leadership of Puki Omang. And my question is, uh, from ethnic perspective, uh, we have been fighting for our freedom for 60, more than 60 years through uh, simply putting in violent means. 
but uh, it seems uh, we failed in that fighting. After 2010, um, there is a possibility of a peaceful transition in Burma through a roundtable uh, dialogue, but it seems uh, impossible again now. So is there any hope for a peaceful change in Burma? Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> so we'll come back to the panel now. We'll take it in reverse order. You are Kim Marte and then Mon. Okay, I will first do very quick answers on some of the questions here. Um, about the, the successful grassroots movements, I think there are plenty, too, too many to actually mention here. And, and, uh, and there are a lot of successes going on. Um, and especially, I would, I would highlight especially a lot of the work that has been done by um, different environmental NGOs, environmental and, and human rights NGOs that are getting, uh, so like a new generation that are uh, cooperating across, across ethnic boundaries and so forth, but also several women's movements and of course the, the, the ability of many people to, to return to the country is, is positive. <coughs> um, the EU analysis, I think, is a little bit wishful thinking. They really, really want Burma's government to be committed to uh, democratization, so they say that they are. Um, but I think that's that's a general thing. If you if you look at at the EU or Western the the US or the EU, up until 2010 in the media and and in all publications, everything that was highlighted was things that were bad in Burma. Everything bad, nothing positive, because there were already back then some positive things, not necessarily by the government, but things were not always awful. Since then, there has been a complete reversal. Now everything good is reported, nothing bad. Um, the, uh, I, sorry to be nitpicky, but the clarification, I, I, many groups signed the Palong ag Agreement, but only the Kashin and Shan had the right of... Uh, of leaving of secession that was my my point so i was sorry if i was if i was uh, unclear um elections we've talked about this me and marte over lunch um i think the elections will be postponed um probably pushed into the beginning of next year um due to security reasons or something like that. But then I want to go back to, to something said about China before. We didn't answer that question. And I think China is actually some, somewhat, strangely, a, posi a, a possible positive influence. China was actually quite willing to act uh, in trying to, to settle these conflicts, not necessarily by any fair means, but they just want stability in the north of Burma and, and, and everywhere. So I think that could also be a way of, of international community to sort of, because now the Chinese are actually getting kind of annoyed because these Burmese um, uh, companies they were working with before are starting to come into Yunnan and saying that, oh, you know, if you don't give us a good price, we're going to go to the American companies instead. So the Chinese really, I mean, like the Chinese have, they are, have so much to gain from the process as it is now but they will, uh, they can also be um, enticed into supporting continued reform, uh, not because they believe in democracy and, and have a good heart, but because they want to make money and they like stability. Thanks a lot, Joachim, and thanks for being the driver to bring us uh, together. Marte, do you see any uh, light at the end of this tunnel? <laughs> yes, <laughs> spider. The grassroots, I think that's the success story of Myanmar this day. I think that's what came out of the tragedy of, of Nargis was actually confidence among some grassroots organizations and, and the beginning of a civil society, a real civil society in Myanmar. And since the, the reform, since the Uthain Sein government with freedom of speech, more, uh, more legal organization, this is what is really changing Myanmar today. So I think that's I think we here all agree that the, uh, the reform or democratization or peace is not going to come from the, the army. They will, they will give a little bit, but they will keep most of it. 
of the power. But what, what can actually change this to become a more positive and more uh, and even a democratic society uh, some decades ahead, that will be the, the, the development of, of grassroots organization and, and uh, civil society in Myanmar. Elections? Yes, I think there will be elections. I, <laughs> I think there will be because I think the, the government and also the Tatmado, they have invested so much in their precious seven point uh, plan to demo, uh, dem discipline flourishing democracy. Uh, and it's constitutional binding to have elections this year. And I think they will, they will do their best to do it. But that does not mean that we, after the election, will have the end point of democratization in, in Myanmar. That is, as I said earlier, that's just a first step also. That's just like a, a milestone. But uh, yes, I think there will be elections, and, and, and uh, possibly in, in, in November. Thank you very much, Marte, and thanks for your work with Prio and us. Elections, but what can we expect? Um, I want to return to the uh, European Union. I, you know, this is a half a joke. I thought that uh, European Union only provided its, um, you know, Eurocrats with Viagra. I didn't realize they also provide them with LSD. It seems like a Brussels dropping a lot of LSD on Burma, seeing things that <laughs> and hearing things over there. You know, everything is good. Yeah, it's like a very Orwellian. Um, <clears throat> on the elections, I'm not as sure as uh, Marta is uh, knowing the generals because uh, nothing binds them except their self-interests and their strategic equations and so you know the, the, the you know everyone in the in burma knows that the, the um, burma burma i mean the army the general strategy uh, the generals and their strategists uh, approach everything as a military operation they have a plan a, they you know they openly say we have plan a to z in burmese from kaji to uh, R. You know, they have so many plans, and and the fact of the matter is that the international politics favors the Burmese regime. They will get away. With, they have gotten away with murder over the past 53 years since 1962. They play. They you are dealing with an extremely ruthless, brutal, but brilliant strategist. Yeah, and and do not under you know, they will sweet talk you, they will charm you, you know you can have a one on one conversation with Thane saying, but you know Zagana, the, the the most famous comedian Zagana described the president who is held up as the Mr. Reformer and shortlisted reportedly for Nobel Peace Prize as Mr. Nothing because he is nothing because he is playing the role where that he is assigned to according to the army script and now the newer generation of the uh, the uh, uh, the the military officers generals in their early 50s and l uh, late 40s and 40s they're like we have to have our own pie. You have done your part when you were older. Now it's our turn. And so, th I I I think that um, I am not seeing light at the end of the tunnel. I do want to see it because if I don't see light at the end of the tunnel, that means I will never see my mother again, who is 78 and crippled. So as a Burmese of all the everyone of all the people in here i am dying to be optimistic but the realities and the, my analysis of the realities dictate that uh, that things are not going to turn out there's not going to be hollywood happy ending thank you mangzarni well it's tough and it has to be discussed and we have to stay engaged and thank you for being here and we do wish you to see your mother thank you